This lecture is on analysis and diagnosis in organization development. We've referred to this in class in some of the lectures, but I'm going to give you a little more in-depth here. All of this information comes from Brown and Harvey, an experiential approach to organization development. Uh, first off, the diagnostic process is a very critical and also a very difficult element in the OD process. Uh, the importance is that you have to know where you are in order to move forward with planning change. If you do the diagnosis correctly, what you will do is accurately identify the specific areas for improvement, where the specific problems are, and this helps you to target your problem-solving interventions more accurately. There are some critical issues in diagnosis. First is simplicity. The more simple the data gathering, the more simple the presentation, the easier it is for your client to understand. Visibility is important, that people recognize that the measures accurately measure what it is you say you're measuring. Involvement is very important. As many organization members as possible is ideal when determining who's going to participate in, um, in gathering data. Primary factors are important because those are the operating variables that you're going to be using in the diagnosis. And you don't want something out on the perimeter. You want to focus on what it is you need to measure. It goes without saying that you should measure what is important. A very straightforward assessment will help reduce the complexity when it comes to the actual diagnosis and interacting with your client. Another issue is urgency. Basically, you need to gauge what the sense of urgency is within the organization for any particular change. The more urgent, the greater the motivation to work towards change. So in a nutshell, what is diagnosis? It's a systematic approach to understanding and describing where the organization is in its present state. A process of gathering information, specifying the exact nature of the problem or problems within the organization, identifying the causes for these problems, as opposed to just the symptoms of the problem being the problem. We'll talk more about that later. And an accurate diagnosis is a basis for selecting the particular change strategy and the particular OD interventions you will use. Basically, the steps uh, to diagnosis are identifying, tentatively identifying the problem areas, collecting data, analyzing data, giving feedback on the data, uh, confirming with your client what those problem areas are based on the feedback, coming up with the accurate diagnosis, implementing, designing a change plan, and then monitoring the results. This is similar to the action uh, research model, you'll note. And here I've included a decision tree so you can kind of see how the steps fall into place. Just follow the numbers and you see where you go, if it's a yes or if it's a no. You can pause and look at this a little more detailed. Let's talk about data collection itself. First off, what is data? Data is simply facts, unstructured, unformed. It can be statistics, it can be opinions, assumptions, it can be facts that you've gathered, it can be clues that you get through interviews, surveys, etc. Information, on the other hand, is data that have a form and a structure, meaning you can interpret it. It gives you information, something to use for decisions. The first step you got to do is define your objectives for the pro change program. Defining those objectives will then determine what data will be required in order to come up with an accurate diagnosis. The next thing you're going to do is identify what those central variables are in terms of this particular situation. Some examples might be the variable of turnover, um, some variables in terms of breakdown and communication. Once you've got your variables, then you select your data gathering method. Remember, there is no one best way for gathering data. It always depends on the nature of the problem you're investigating. There are a number of data sources, more than I have listed here. Secondary sources are uh, data that already exist in the organization, mainly for other purposes. Stuff like finance data, productivity data, quality, performance data, tracking employee thefts, stuff like turnover, which we've already mentioned, absentee rates. That's the secondary uh, data source. Uh, this is the end of part one, so we can close this out and then go to part two.